Hello everyone and welcome to Sunburned Albino Compares Notes on Until Dawn. Now, this video is not a series of the game, although I do plan to do one. What this is, I got the game at 9pm last night when it came out, and then I stayed up all night until about 4.30 and beat it uh, in one sitting. So I know that based on that, I'm one of the first normal people who like didn't get it like early access or anything uh, to complete the game. And it had such a profound effect on me, and it's so, the choices that you make in it, and just how everything can turn out, you know, it's the butterfly effect, as which is the theme of the game. I wanted to make a comparison video where I show you my butterfly effects, like everything that happened in mine. And then in the comments, people who have also finished the game, or don't care about spoilers, uh, can compare what they did... And so, you know, because this is going to be, a, like, if you want to experience all the, the game has to offer and you want to see everything, like, you'd be hard-pressed to do it yourself. This should be a community effort where we can, you know, just, like, put our heads together and just view, like, all the different types of endings that can possibly be done. So here, as you can see, like, I barely found even half the totems. They're pretty well hidden. Like, some of them are, you know, out in the open, like, once you get in the beginning, but then I guess I didn't find most of them. Uh, but, uh, so if, so yeah, so you get the, so spoilers abound, you get the point of the video. I want to, let's go into our butterfly effect. So the first butterfly effect is any of your business. And what I, Sam looked at Chris's incoming message. So like when they were at the beginning and, uh, Chris's phone was ringing in the bag, I had Sam snoop and look at it. Chris was offended by Sam's indiscretion. And then, uh, Chris criticized Sam for being nosy. Now this Butterfly effect, you know, seems very trivial. Like, I, it doesn't see, and because it doesn't go on from here, it seems like it's kind of a one-off. It doesn't really affect anything. But uh, I'm interested to see what would happen. You know, it just seems like it would be kind of like a mild relationship builder if I hadn't done that. So, uh, so that one, you know, is neither here or there. And here we have rats with bushy tails. Chris chose not to shoot the squirrel because I'm not a fucking animal, that's why. It was pretty obvious, you know. Uh, Sam was watching and she was passed as an animal lover, so it was a pretty easy decision to make. You don't shoot a squirrel in front of somebody who loves animals. And so, as a result of that, nature remained in balance. And it's cool because later in the game, uh, you find the journal from, like, the stranger with the flamethrower, and in it, it says how, like, the Native Americans indigenous to the land thought that it was bad luck to kill animals on the mountain. So that sort of, like, reinforces this this sort of, this view that, you know, you shouldn't mess with nature. And th throughout the rest of the game, when there are times when you can interact with nature and animals, it's always better to not kill animals. That I can say for sure. Because, you know, it, it ties in with, like, the whole uh, superstition and whatnot. So number three, the soul of discretion. Ashley encouraged Matt to use the telescope, and Matt saw Mike and Emily flirting. Uh, so, you know, Ashley sees them flirting, or... W it, it, they're not doing anything incriminating, so it was kind of a difficult decision. I was like, you know, maybe this is nothing. I could possibly defuse this situation. But I thought it would be better... You know, you, you know, you can take it at face value. If you see what I see, what she saw, then, you know, you can make your own decisions based on that. And so Matt saw Mike and Emily flirting, and then Matt confronted Mike, which is what I had him do, because what the hell would you do? You can't just be like, oh, well, that's fine. Uh, so that did that. And then that one even, I mean, it, you know, it puts a rift between the two of them, but I had, I never saw that one amount to anything. But that might be because Matt died really early in my game. Like, I probably should have prefaced this. I only had three people live. And two of them, I was supposed to be five, but two of them died at the very last sequence, and that pissed me the fuck off. But, uh, so that's that. Uh, whose side are you on? Matt sided with Jessica during the fight with Emily. That was not on purpose. Like, there were two prompts in that argument, if you remember. One, you, where you could be like, hey, chill out, Emily, or hey, chill out, Jessica. I said, hey, chill out, Emily, the first time, but then the second time I said, hey, chill out, Jessica. So I guess, you know, she still, like, thought that I was being all, you know, defend, like, on, like, whose side are you on? You know, as the butterfly thing thing. So, you know, per replay, I will definitely... So either pick side with Jessica. Well, I mean, it should have been like kind of a two-pronged approach, but I sided with Jessica. I should not have sided with Jessica. I didn't mean to side with Jessica, but Emily at that point in the dialogue was being more of a bitch than Jessica was. But then it shifted and then Jessica was being more of a bitch. So it's like, hey, Jessica, how about you shut the fuck up? 
And so I guess, you know, Emily doesn't appreciate that even one of those, I would be like, hey, how about you don't do that? And then be your hero. Mike came to Jessica's aid immediately. So like when Jessica sort of fell down in the, into the mine shaft, I had Mike uh, jump down immediately after her, which I knew was a good decision immediately because the psycho was like right behind him at the time. Uh, so, you know, maybe something would have happened there if I hadn't done that. Uh, but Jessica appreciated Mike's heroism. Uh, but he failed to impress her under pressure. And that's the part that pisses me off. Because, like, I chose when Jessica was feeling all uncomfortable about, like, possible sexual activities. And maybe it had something to do with being wet. Because I did have Mike scare her back in the river. And she got, like, kind of pushed into the river a little bit after I put the mask on. Uh, but he failed to impress, impress her under pressure because, and this is so stupid, I was more concerned with her feelings because she started to, like, talk to Mike about how she was being, you know, oh, I'm insecure, I have problems, like, you know, I, I'm, I put up this front, but, like, on the inside, I'm very self-aware and stuff. And then I was an idiot, and I was like, oh, I'm going to be concerned for you. I'm going to try to help you through this. Instead of picking what was clearly the option that the game wanted me to pick was, oh, fuck that. Let's have sex. Like, continue to flirt super hard. I don't, so I'm not a fan of that one. But uh, Jessica, yes, yeah, so Jessica resisted Mike's advances after he decided that he was a good guy. And then she was all like, oh, you know, you're different than, like, I thought you were going to be because, like, you're actually nice and I don't like nice guys because I'm a fucking slut. And then I guess that's how that works out. So, yeah, that but that one begs to be retold as well because I want Mike to get laid. I think it's unfair that that he died before he got laid. He should not have died either. He was one of the ones who died right at the end for me, and that pissed me off because you work, you probably work the hardest on keeping him alive throughout the game. Okay, something for later. Josh locked the baseball bat in the cupboard. I don't even remember that happening, but I guess that that was a good thing. But Sam made the right choices to avoid the psycho in the cellar. So, like, you know, when shit hits the fan, I was like, run. Because in the basement, you always want to run. And in any escape sequence, I would think, you want to run. If there's, if there's uh, the option to run or hide, you should run. Unless you get to the Wendigos, like, in the later, because Wendigos can't, you know, tell movement. So that's when you would want to hide, because then they can't see you. But when it comes to avoiding the psycho, like, I definitely think run, because you don't want to corner yourself, especially with, like, a human who would, you know, probably predict something like that. Uh, but uh, so Sam made the right choices to avoid the psycho in the cellar. Then Sam was caught in the old hotel because I continued because I did make one decision where I ran instead of hid at the end. And that one got me caught. I don't know if there's a way I could possibly escape if I had hid at the last part. But uh, I... I don't know. So, I got caught in the old hotel. At least I didn't get caught in the cellar. You know, maybe that's the silver lining. I don't know. To the rescue. Mike successfully chased after Jessica. So, once the creature you find out to be the Wendigo, um, you know, rips Jessica out of the window, then, you know, Mike chases after her, and I had him not die during the chase, which I assume he could die during the chase, like if you miss a bunch of button prompts. Uh, th which are very difficult, by the way. Some of those, like, timed button presses, they give you no time to react. So I was very lucky that I didn't miss a single one throughout the entire game, because that could have been devastating. So I am proud of that. I didn't miss any quick time events. Although, the ones where it says don't move, I'm so fidgety, I can't do it. I cannot do the ones where it says don't move, and I think that screwed me in a couple situations. I think that got Emily bit for me. Uh, was because I couldn't, like, I hold the c controller as still as I possibly can. But, it you know, it's still, like, you can just see the blue light just sort of slowly tilting, like, outside. And it's like, how do I tilt this to make it, like, go back to where it was? And then you just make it worse. And, yeah. But Jessica was still alive, uh, you find out way later in the game. After, even after she gets dropped down that mine shaft. And then, unfortunately, Jessica failed to escape a second time. Because I chose to run instead of hide when the Wendigo caught, found her. And that was a dumb mistake on my part. I know the lore of the Wendigos. I know their sight is based on movement. I know there's no way... Jessica was hobbling super slow the entire time. I knew there was no way. I, I just made a split-second decision. It happened to be the wrong one. Also, I think because Matt was already dead at that point, apparently Matt was not there to help her. Like, apparently they meet up if he's still alive. Uh, but he wasn't, so that probably also put kind of a damper on her survival abilities there. And which one will die? 
Chris said that he would save Ashley. So when um, Josh was tied and Ashley were tied up, and like the saw blade was coming, and Chris had to like save one of them, Chris said that he would save Ashley. I feel like that's the right decision since Josh turns out to be the psycho. I, you know, I said that there were spoilers in this, right? So this, you know, this is an all access thing. Because Josh turned out to be the psycho, so like him dying is fake anyway. But I am curious to know that if I chose to save Josh, if Ashley would die for real. It's, or if they would like manipulate it in a way that maybe like Josh, you know, would like Josh would be happy that he chose him. So like he would let her live because he said that he didn't want to hurt anybody josh did like the point wasn't to kill any of them it was just to you know so i feel like you know i i could pick josh and then it would just cause a rift between ashley and chris that might actually kill chris later because i think i you know there was a foreshadow to when there was a moment where ashley could have let chris die but she didn't because i saved her i think but yeah ashley was grateful and felt indebted to chris uh, Josh felt betrayed and antagonized Chris. I'm not sure how that sort of plays out into the whole scheme of things, but, you know, that makes sense. Uh, and then Chris considered violence, but I didn't. I did not hit him with the plank, which is probably the better thing to have done. And then I don't know how that would have gone if you did consider violence. That's what, uh, that's what's cool about this game, and that's why I want to compare notes with everybody in the comment section and whatnot. So, at what price? Mike hacked off his own fingers, so Mike no longer had a usable machete after hacking off his fingers. Now, I tried two times to pry my fingers out of the bear trap without resort. Like, I wasn't just like, oh, I'm stuck. Better cut my fingers off immediately. I was like, let's, let's explore our other options first. But, you know, as, like, the site was zoning in, I can't tell if there was a dog that was after Mike or if it was a Wendigo. But it, like, did the same vision of a Wendigo, so maybe it was a Wendigo, in fact. But if it was a dog, like, I don't know. Like, maybe maybe if I had tried a third time to not cut my fingers off, I would have, you know, salvaged my machete, and it would have worked. But, like, after two attempts and, like, the dog closing in or whatever, I was like, okay, I should probably, you know, we... Let's take a realistic look at my reality right now. Uh, so I no longer had a usable machete after hacking off my fingers. Uh, but Mike found another way through the sanatorium. I assumed that if I had my machete, there'd be a different way. But, you know, I found, like, the shotgun and stuff like that, so... I, that was okay. Uh, and then Sam rescued Mike in the mine. Because, you know, when she goes in to, like, go after him and stuff. And then, uh, you know, I killed the Wendigo with a shovel. And then that, you know, that was pretty routine. And then that's the end of that one, okay. All right, and then man's best friend. This one, I'm so mad. I'm so mad at how this one turned out for me. Mike kicked the wolf. I think you have to kick the wolf. I think you have to show dominance so that the wolf kind of mildly respects you. And then, but I made amends because I did find, like, the body part, and I gave it to the wolf. So I was like, okay, we're friends now, right? And we were. So it was so nice to just have, like, this pet wolf. It was just, like, this this sort of, like, unjudging con like just friend, like, good thing. Like, everybody else is so conniving in certain ways depending on, like, how you treat them. But the wolf is just so simple. It's just a simplistic relationship that I like so much. And that's why it pisses me off, because the wolf guided Mike around the sanatorium like it was to po supposed to do. And then Mike failed to protect his new friend, because during one of the decisions, I chose, instead of barricading the door, to just leave. N take it from me. If there's ever a way, if there's ever a decision to lock or barricade a door, you take that decision. Because otherwise you know, you just get followed. There have been times when I didn't barricade a door and it worked out, kind of. But this was not one of them because, and it's because, like, you have to jump through, like, a hole in the floor after you make either the decision to barricade the door or to exit. I mean, after you barricade the door, obviously you're going to exit anyway. But because I didn't barricade the door, the dog didn't have enough, or the wolf didn't have enough time to jump down the hole because he was skittish about it because it was like a long drop. And Mike was like, you know, egging him on, like, come on, let's go. And then right when the wolf makes the jump, he gets killed by the Wendigo. It pisses that. If there's any death that I'm pissed off about, it's the wolf more than anything else. So I definitely have to make amends for that next time. Now, on the same page, this is the first butterfly we've come to that I don't have all the way filled in. Uh, Matt supported Emily's plan to go to the tower and get help. And then nothing, there's nothing after that because Matt died afterwards. I can tell you why. Matt died. It's because, like, once the tower started to, like, fall and stuff, 
First off, what happens if you don't support Emily's plan? Do you not go to the tower? Do you go back? Or do you just go to the tower and she's in more of a huff and then, you know, they're all aggressive and pretty much the same shit would happen. Uh, but the tower was falling down and then, like, you get to a point where you can make a decision to either jump to safety or try to save Emily. I tried to save Emily. I wanted to save Emily. I like Emily. I think Jessica's the only character in this game that's, that's sort of inherently dislikable. So that she was really the only one that I didn't really care if she died. But I wanted to save at least everybody else. And I wanted to save Jessica if I could. But I couldn't. And, but I wasn't really sad about that. But so I try to save uh, Emily. But then she falls anyway. Like she falls. But at the same time, but she ends up living even though she fell. So it's like if Matt jumped to the ledge instead, if he had made the selfish choice, she would still fall. Would she, would she still be alive? But then Matt, it seemed like, you know, landed on the same ledge anyway. Unless it fell, like, even a bit further and I missed it. But, uh, yeah, Matt... So Emily fell, and then I took control of Matt for, like, literally 10 seconds. Because Matt lives, and he lands in, like, one of these caves. And so I take control of him for, like, 10 seconds. I'm just walking through the cave, and then all of a sudden, I just die. He dies. Like, the Wendigo grabs him like strings him up on a hook and like impales him through the mouth i'm like what could i have done to prevent this i don't understand like was there a torch that i missed i don't I, there was no prompt there was no anything there was no decision that i made that put those events in motion it just sort of happened i was like oh well i guess matt's dead now first death tally goes so matt was the first character to die in my story and that seems kind of wrong because he shouldn't have, he just shouldn't have died i don't think so runner hide sam got herself caught uh, you know, that was based on, you know, avoiding her in the old, in, him in the old, old hotel, but then getting caught anyway, because I assume that's how that ends regardless. Uh, so Chris and Ashley found Sam. So I had, you know, when they were searching for Sam, they found Sam, which is good. Uh, Sam needed to be rescued by Mike, unfortunately, because, in this, because I forgot to, I never saw, I, I, I did like a little story mission where it was like Chris and Ashley, and then they find like the video of like hannah and they watch it and they're like oh i'm disgusted by this and then i looked at my butterfly effects and i read one that had updated and it said ashley failed to grab the scissors and i was like oh god what have i done i never saw any scissors if i saw scissors i would have grabbed the scissors but i never saw them and i was like oh god i just killed them didn't i i just killed at least ashley ashley's sure to die now because she has nothing to defend herself against something that's totally going to happen where she needs to to defend herself so that was, uh, I, that would, yeah. So Sam needed to be rescued by Mike because, you know, the psycho knocked out both Chris and Ashley because Ashley did not have the scissors to defend herself. Although, would, have it, would it have happened? You know, how, what can you really do with scissors? Like, I've, I feel like those events maybe were set in stone. But uh, you never know. So here we are in self-defense. So Matt walked calmly. So, okay, yeah, so when the deer, like, approached, this is another example of where you don't fuck with nature. Matt walked calmly through the herd. There's an option where you can, like, choose to hit one of them with an axe. I'm like, are you a fucking monster? Why would you do that? Uh, but you don't do that. So Matt and Emily escaped the threat unscathed, which is good. It's very good that that happened. So, you know, that's a very, just very closed book uh, butterfly effect handled correctly. Probably no better way to do that, I would say. Now, this is the only butterfly effect where I don't know anything about it because it never happened. Who gets the gun? That was like a main, dis based on the comments of some of the videos that I've seen, like early access playing of this game, people were like, like this, oh, this is the butterfly effect. Like this is one of the most important decisions you can make, but I never got to make it. So I, I don't know. I don't know anything about it. I hope somebody tells me who does. Uh, so save yourself. Matt tried to save Emily. That's, I think that's what you should do. Even, you know, even she's being a bitch, but that doesn't mean you let her die. Plus, I like her anyway. Like, you know, I, I kind of like her attitude. But uh, Matt fell into the mine and was attacked. And Matt was killed. It's, it's as simple as that. I don't know how that's prevented. And Jessica was alone in the mine because Matt was killed. And so that pretty much sealed Jessica's fate as well. You know, it's kind of a one-two punch there, like does not bode well for Jessica when Matt is dead. So, I, yeah, again, if he jumped to safety, maybe he landed on a different ledge where there wouldn't be a Wendigo that would kill him. I guess I'll have to try that in a subsequent playthrough, but, uh, which I do plan to do. I am gonna, you know, for my channel, I, I will do an Until Dawn series, and I will enjoy the hell out of it, and I'll make, and I'll try to correct some of these mistakes that I've made. 
Forewarned is forearmed. Ashley, yeah, here we go. Ashley didn't take the scissors. God damn it. Ashley had no defense against the Psycho. Very straightforward. Um, so, yeah, you know, they all got knocked out, and then they ended up in that predicament where, you know, Chris is like, oh, shoot her or shoot myself and stuff. Stick together. Ashley followed Chris. Ashley failed to see who was in the workshop. Now, I thought this was a really easy decision to make because when you see the silhouette of who was in the workshop, it looks like it's friggin' the Psycho. Why would you follow by yourself someone who looks exactly like the Psycho? Although maybe it ends up being Mike? I feel like, oh, it actually really could have ended up being Mike because at the same time, Mike is making his way through that area because when those two get caught, Mike is the one who finds Sam. And, but instead, they're the ones who find Sam because Sam is really, really close by. So maybe that was Mike because Mike is wearing that guy's jacket. So it could be that I made... I feel like either decision maybe could be the right decision, but it's still like I always am going to opt for sticking together. That's the smart thing to do. So Ashley failed to see who was in the workshop. Chris and Ashley found a dummy in Sam's clothes. So, I mean, that's neither here nor there because after that sort of resolves itself when you find Sam in her towel, just like knocked out and stuff. So, uh, yeah. Um, there, so that's that one. And then point blank. Chris didn't shoot Ashley because I had him pull the gun on himself because that's, you know, I wanted Ashley to live. But also something just felt fishy about the entire thing at this point. Because, like, nobody who had met with the Psycho had died yet, even though I had made plenty of mistakes that could have allowed them to die. But he would choose not to kill them. So I was like, this could be, like, some kind of setup. But still, like, even if it was, like, I wouldn't want to, it, to be, it to be set up. Like, because it's, it's a fake gun, it's blanks. But I wouldn't want the last thing that I do to be like, oh, shoot Ashley. But, oh, she didn't really get shot. But she, she would still be, like, pretty pissed off at me, probably. Uh, if, you know, if that was, like, my last final thing, if I thought I was going to die, and then I just shoot the person in front of me instead of me. You know, it's selfish. It's selfless. Or, yeah, no, it, it is selfish. It would have been selfish to do that. That's totally what I would have done. I would have definitely shot the person in front of me. I'd rather not die, because I like my life too much, more than other people's. Uh, but Ashley was concerned about Chris as he left. So, you know, they kiss, and they have their moment, which is nice, because I really wanted their love story to work out, and it pisses me off that the last decision I made in this game also killed Ashley as well as Mike. So Chris was just left by himself. Okay, so Ashley opened the door, saving Chris's life. So if there's a rift between Ashley and Chris, when the stranger gets killed... First off, is the stranger getting killed an in inevitability? Because that was one of the sections where... Because, you know, the Wendigo, they see the Wendigo, and then there's a don't move section. And I failed that don't move section because I'm too fidget. I can't do it. it ah, it's so, it's so maddening. Uh, so that got the stranger killed. I'm not sure if he would have lived otherwise. But, yeah, so then, you know, Chris runs through and, like, I shoot the shotgun at the Wendigo a bunch of times. I never blew up the stuff that was next to it. I wonder if that does something. But, uh, you know, maybe that makes him less in danger. And maybe he can, like, open the door himself or somebody else will get to the door. But, uh, yeah, Ashley opened the door, saving Chris's life. So, good for her, I guess. You know, paying it forward. All right, and then once bitten... Emily was bitten. I don't know if that's a foregone conclusion. I'm not sure if I missed a prompt there, or I don't. I didn't miss a prompt. I'm not sure if I missed a don't move there. It's, it's very possible. But maybe she doesn't have to get bit. But Mike spared Emily. And it's cool, though, because Emily finds a totem that could foresee her possible death, and that death is the one where if you have Mike shoot Emily, that's the totem. So I was like, I'm definitely not going to have this come true. A, I don't want Emily to die. And I definitely don't want Emily to die by somebody else. That would cause a big rift between the group. So yeah, Mike spared Emily and did not have him shoot her. Ashley was faced with a dilemma and told the truth. I'm not sure what your dilemma is. You find out that the bite is not going to turn her into a Wendigo. You say, oh, hey, how about some reassuring information? I'm sorry I was wrong about this. Maybe I could take a slap in the face. Maybe I deserve one because I was all like, kick her out. Kick her out. She's a bitch. Wow. Wow. So, you know, maybe, oh, I have to find the courage within myself to not let her die. Not let her think that she could totally turn into a monster right now. Good for you, Ashley. That's when Ashley started to piss me off a little bit. And I was like, you know, maybe I've put too much effort into saving her life. But, uh, oh, and then it says, Emily pushed past Ashley and Ashley was killed. That's sort of inconsequential because that's still my fault that those two died anyway. It's because, like, I... As the final scene, the final scene is, you know, like, 
there's a bunch of Wendigos. They're all fighting each other. They don't see none of any of the kids because they're all being as perfectly still as they can. By the way, most infuriating section when it comes to the fact that I can't do these don't move sections. And then what you're supposed to do is like one by one, the people move near close inch closer to the door, like as events happen so they can run out so that you can set the mansion on fire with like an explosion because there's faulty wiring and like a pipe and what whatnot. I don't know. So what you're supposed to do is just stall and wait for everybody to get out. But I forgot at one of the moments that, oh, there's still other people in here because I, as Sam, made a run for the switch instead of hiding. I completely forgot about the fact like, oh, this is going to kill two of our friends. And so it killed two of our friends. Oh, my God, that pissed me off. I'm so mad. I'm so mad at myself for that one because I completely didn't think. But uh, so, yeah, left behind. Ashley wouldn't leave Chris. Ashley ignored the voice. Is the voice Jessica or is the voice the Wendigo? Because, I, you know, the Wendigo can mimic the cries of people. That's what it said in one of the lore books. And so I was like, that could easily just be the Wendigo, like, trying to get her alone so that you can kill her. So I was like, I'm not going to fall for that. But she thought it was Jessica. I don't know if it ends up being Jessica. They do seem like they're in kind of the same area. But uh, Ashley joined the others. So I didn't. And because of that, Chris was safe somehow, I guess. Maybe Chris was, oh, Chris was saved. That's probably just from the first thing. Like, Ashley wouldn't leave Chris. Chris would absolutely probably die if we just left him behind. Why would we do that? Oh, hey, you're slowing us down a little bit. Why don't you just stay here and become food? Okay. Like, that's, that's, a, that's a gimme decision right there. Important discovery. Sam failed to discover a vital record. I'm so mad. So Josh recognized Hannah too late and was killed. So yeah, Hannah is one of the Wendigos. And she had the butterfly tattoo on her arm. Which means Hannah ate Beth. Like, that's, you know, that's pretty self-explanatory. And also pretty really gross. So what is the vital record? Is it in that area is where Sam failed to discover a vital record? Because it doesn't... I discovered so many of the clues. I, miss, I only missed four clues. I only missed four clues about the twins. So I guess one of them was really important, although you should have recognized... Hannah with the butterfly tattoo that was mentioned like 50 billion times throughout the course of the story. You should have recognized it anyway. But you saw Josh was killed, but we don't really feel bad about Josh being killed just because he's mentally insane and like, you know, tried to do all this shit. The result of chaos. Sam escaped. Mike died in the lodge because I'm an idiot. Ashley died in the lodge because I'm an idiot. Emily escaped, which is nice. And Chris escaped, which is nice, but not nice because Ashley died in the lodge. So that's basically the end of how my Until Dawn story worked out. And, you know, there's so much intricacy. There's so much room for error, so many room for changes. So that's why I'm really, I really am interested to see what everybody else did. Like, I want to put all the pieces of this story together, all the possible outcomes, and see just, like, all the different routes that this story can take. So please, if you've beaten the game, or you're close enough, or you've... Or even just like if you're not, if you just if you just pick one of these butterfly flags that's different than mine, please comment what it is. I want to know, and then I want in this video to be like the you know like basically a forum post that just like compares all the story outlets. And I know that might be better served on a forum site, but I'm also trying to get views and stuff. So <laughs> all right, share with everybody and whatever. So yeah, that's gonna do it for this this, this episode uh, one off sort of thing. Uh, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and whatnot, and I will see you guys next time, possibly if you decide to watch my series of this game. So, uh, see you next time.